Hey Year 12 and welcome to Mathematical Mo Brain Movies. This is going to be a short series of four videos on um, some tips and tricks to help you do well in trigonometry. So I thought since we're doing tips and tricks I'd better start with a nice little trick myself. I won't do this at the start of every video or that'll take for too long but just to get us into the mood of tips and tricks. So as you can see I'm shuffling well. I'll just show you the cards so that you can see I'm obviously not cheating. Okay, pretty well shuffled. I'll shuffle them one last time so that you can see. This um, trick is called the power of four and I'll explain why. So the way that this trick works is that I'm going to use my mathematical intuition to tell you that um, if I work out or have a look at what the fourth card is on this pile, then I'll be able to use my mathematical intuition to work out the fourth card on this pile. So Let's have a look. One, two, three, and I'll turn it over. Ten of diamonds. So I can tell you that if this is the ten of diamonds, the fourth card down here is going to be the jack of spades. One, two, three, and four. Nailed it. See if you can work out how I did that. Enough of the card tricks. Let's get on to the maths tricks that will hopefully be more useful to you in life and particularly in this exam. So, um, the first set of tricks are all around angles. So, the first thing is that when you get any particular question, you need to fill in as many angles as you can. So, whenever you get a, que a question in a diagram, fill in everything that you can in terms of angles. So, I just want to remind you of some of those angle relationships to use. So, here's the first one. Complementary angles add up to 90 degrees. So that is two angles or three angles or four angles that um, are, form a right angle together add up to 90. So if this one here is 55, work out what this one must be. It must be 90 minus 55. That's going to be 35 degrees. I'm not going to give you heaps of time to do each of these questions, but if you can just kind of stay on the ball and give it a go as I talk through it or how to do it, then, um, then I think you'll get more out of the video. So this next one here says supplementary angles add up to 180. So angles on a straight line add up to 180. So if this one's 130, this one must be 180 minus 130 or 50 degrees. This one here says angles at a point, so that is all these angles all the way around, add up to 360, so 360 degree revolution. And it asks you to work out just one of these. So since there's five of them, and we're just going to assume that they're all equal because this is a regular pentagon, you're going to do 360 divided by 5 in this particular instance. So that would give you 72 degrees for each of those angles. The next ones that come in handy when we're looking at trigonometry are these three. So the first one is alternate angles or alternate angles, and they're equal. So we kind of remember this by the Z rule. So we often think of this in terms of a Z with the two inside bits of the Z kind of um, indicated. So these angles are equal. So if I know that this is 70, this one must be 70. The next one is co-interior angles. And this one we usually remember as a U. So it looks like this. And again, it's the two inside angles. Now these two you can clearly see aren't equal, but they, because this one's really big and this one's not big, but they add to 180. So if this one's 120, this one must be 60 degrees, since 120 plus 60 is 180. The last one, of course, that comes in really handy is that angles in a triangle add to 180. So if I know this is 70 and this is 40, together those two angles add up to 110, in which case this angle must be 70 degrees, since 110 plus 70 gives me 180. So let's go back to this question and see how many of these angles we can fill in. Start by filling in this one. If those two um, angles form a right angle and this one's 70 degrees, then hopefully you can work out that this one here must be 20 degrees, since 70 plus 20 gives you 90. Try and work out this one next. You know this is 70, you know this is 30, so together they add up to 100. This is a triangle here, so those three angles add up to 180, so this must be 80 degrees, since those two together added up to 100. If I know that this one's 80 and I know that these two form a straight line, they're supplementary angles, they have to add up to 180. 
So if this is 80, this one must be 100, so that they add up to 180. Then of course I can work out this last one here. I know this is 100 and this is 20. Here's a triangle here and those three have to add up to 180. So this one must be, hopefully you got it, 60 degrees. Okay, let's have a look at this next one here. So you can see, you can fill in all that information just from those couple of angles. Let's have a look at this one here. It um, is more like a bearings question, which I know some of you struggle a little bit with. So I've been told that this is 115 degrees, and I just want to fill in what I can. I've also got down here that this one's 30. The first one that I'm um, going to use is this information here, that this forms the U or the co-interior. I know that they're both facing north so they're parallel. I should have mentioned that all of those rules only apply to um, angles that are on parallel lines. So I should have mentioned that. It's a pretty important um, detail. So if I have a look then these two have to add up to 180. If this is 115 I'd work out this angle by doing 180 minus 115 degrees. 180 minus 115 is 65, so that's what that angle must be equal to. The next rule that I'm going to use to try and fill in some of this information is that um, these two angles, so this here is like the Z, I don't know if you can see that clearly, I'll just draw it here, going down, across and down, so it's like the, um, the Z, they're alternate angles. So if I know that this is 115, then I can tell you, or I could have used that this is 65 as well, that all the way across here, that's going to be 115 degrees. Now here, I know that this little one here that they've given me is 30, and I can use another set of alternate angles. There's another Z going like this this time to see that this one here and this one here are equal, so this will be 30. Now if this is 115 altogether, these two, and this is 30, I can work out what this little one here must be by doing 115 take away 30, which gives me 85. So this angle in here now I've worked out is 85. It's getting a little bit messy and a little bit tight in there, I realise, but obviously we'll do our best. I think I meant to give you on this diagram another little bit of information. I'm just trying to find the original question, but I don't think I can see it. Yeah, I should have given you this piece of information too, so sorry to trick you there. So if I know that this is 115 and this is 35, I can use those two pieces of information to work out this one, since the three of them have to add up to 180. Well, 115 plus 35 gives me 150. And so this one, sorry, yeah, 150, that's correct, isn't it? 120, 30, yep. And so for this one to add up to 180, this must be 30 degrees. Now, the only other ones that I've got here that I'd like to find out would be this one here and maybe the whole thing across there. So I know it's getting a little bit messy here, so I'm just going to redraw my big triangle so it kind of looks like, like this. I know that that's 30. I know that this is 85. So I can work out this one using the fact that the three angles in a triangle add up to 180. So these two together, 85 plus 30, would give me 115. And so this one here then has to be 180 minus 115, which would be 65. So all the way across, I can say that that angle there is 65 degrees. In which case I can say that this little one here, since this and this add up to 65, this little one here must be 35. So you can see heaps of information that I managed to get out of um, that diagram just from those few pieces of information given. Oh, that was the name of the trick, so I didn't forget it, power of four. Okay, next one here I just want to show you about, um, before we finish this stuff on angles, is just a little bit of help for those of you that are struggling with um, bearings. If I'm asked to draw a bearing of 72 degrees, remember bearings are always, if they're just given like this, with no um, indicator of northwest, south or east or anything, they're always taken from north. So you choose your point and you imagine yourself standing at that point. You always turn clockwise, so you always turn in this direction by the number of degrees shown. So 72 degrees, I'm going to imagine myself turning 72 degrees 
and then that is the direction that I start to move. You know, I might move 100 metres in that direction. Okay, let's have a look at this one. A bearing of 125. I imagine myself facing north and turning through 125 degrees. So it's going to be somewhere down there since 180 would be all the way there. 90 would be there. It's going to be like here. That's the direction that I move and I might say all 71 kilometres to a new point. Now, sometimes the bearings are given like this, in which case I have to remember that I've got never eat soggy wheat fix going on here. So I face north and this tells me I'm turning toward the west. So I'm facing north and turning toward the west and I'm turning by 20 degrees. So it's about there. So this is the direction that I'm going to head. Okay. This one, again, I've got my never eat soggy wheat bix. This time I'm facing south and I'm turning 70 degrees to the east. So 70 degrees toward the east. That's the direction that I'm heading there with this is 70 degrees. Now sometimes, I might just do one more thing here. Sometimes they give you um, multiple bearings. So it might say, I'm, you know, so-and-so, whoever, John Smith, um, starts sailing on a bearing of 72 degrees and he sails that far for 100 kilometres. Then he turns and he sails on a new bearing of, um, you know, 120 degrees for 50 kilometres. Then he turns and he sails on a new bearing of, whatever, it doesn't matter, you know, um, let's say 225 degrees for 20 kilometres. And then it says, then he returns to the start or something like that. So you draw this diagram. So you're going to start, you choose your starting point. You imagine yourself facing north. You turn 72 degrees, right? It's not, that's 90, so it's going to be somewhere there. That's 72 degrees. And I sail that far for 100 kilometres. Now, when I get to that point, I need to, again, imagine myself facing north because every time you have to imagine yourself at your next point facing north. This time I turn 120 degrees. So it's going to be like something like that, 120 degrees. And I sail for 50 kilometres. So I'm going to turn and go 120 degrees for 50 kilometres this time. Okay. Then I get to my next point. Again, I need to turn so I'm facing north. So in every case, you must be facing north before you work out the new direction you move. So now I turn 225 degrees this time. So 180 would have been here. So 225 is going to be somewhere there. So I turn so I'm facing that direction. I sail that way for 20 kilometres. So this bearing here, so because that's the angle that I turn through, 225 degrees. And I'd sailed for 20 kilometres, then I return to my starting point, wherever that was. Okay? So you've got to be able to remember that every time you do a bearing from a new point, you have to start facing north and imagine yourself turning around before you set sail again. Okay? All right, last thing I just want to point out for um, this video on um, reviewing angles is just angles of elevation and depression. So just a reminder, an angle of elevation is... Um, taken from, both of these are taken from the horizontal, but an elevation is when you go up and a depression is when you go down. So here, my angle of elevation to the top of this tree, here's my horizontal, so it's taken up from the horizontal, that wasn't the best drawing, but this would be my angle of elevation. Okay, there's my horizontal and I've gone up. Angle of depression is a little bit trickier. Sometimes people um, mess it up, so I should just mention this always forms a nice little triangle. So your angle of elevation sits nicely in your triangle when you're doing whatever calculation. Angle of depression, if here's my boat sailing down here, then my angle of depression, remember, it's always measured from the horizontal going down toward wherever you're looking at. So here's my angle of depression. Now this one doesn't sit within my triangle because there's my triangle there. So once I've got it, I need to do something to get it into this triangle or to, to work out one of these angles. I know this is 90. You've got two options. You can either use the Z rule, because here's a nice little Z there, to 
to work out that this will be the same. So if this was 70, oh, it looks more like 50. If this was 50, then this would be 50 because of the Z. The other option is to say, well, these two here must form a 90 degree angle. So if that's 50, this will have to be 40. You can do whichever one you want in order to get these other angles for your calculations. That's the end of the um, tips and tricks for um, angles. Of course, the most important trick of all is practice, practice, practice. So all the best with um, your study and your work around angles. Get ready for the next little part of this series.